Hey everybody, Go7 here with a rotation first impression. This is a new, newly rotated in standard map. This is spring in general. And as we can see here, it, it's a mixed base with a double base, single base, single base, so that for both players. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I've come up with three different openings. I think I can kind of show off to you that you could uh, deploy in your in your own games. Uh, I'll go with what I would consider the standard opening first, which is going to be, of course, with all the openings, is always going to be going for these neutral bases. And player one is going to get this base slower than player two does. Just something to uh, keep in mind, just because of uh, turn advantage. Player one will get this one off. We'll get this one faster and this one slower. That kind of thing. But it does kind of matter a bit, because in all of the openings that I've tried out, this does mean that player two has a much easier time getting this city, which is something to keep in mind while playing to either maybe as player one <laughs> divert some stuff early on to uh, to stop that city from being captured or to just keep in mind that you're going to need to invest in something to take it back at some point. And artillery will probably work. It's kind of choky over there. Uh, the first decision you can have here with this infantry you can either go for this city which is the one i think is better because it does is a of course a day one capture and is also putting you towards these contested properties uh the other option is of course to go down here for this chain and get you an early presence in the middle which could be something that could pay off later on or you could go for this capture and then back here uh i personally prefer delaying these a really long time because i mean they're behind your base so it's not like your opponent can really do anything to ever stop you from going for those. So there's no real rush. But if you want to, you could go for these. Uh, you would still work out. It just might be a little more dangerous as the game progresses. So the, uh, the main thing with the standard opening on any map is that you go for the closest captures first to get as much immediate income as possible. And then you usually go for a tank first from whichever position you're going to have the advantage in fighting in. So that's usually going to be the double base. I just... Well, I just played red twice, but that's okay. I can restore this turn for blue moon and take that stuff back. No worries. Red does not get to uh, just keep playing like that. That would be, that'd be funny. So we'll go for this now. You could also go down here and go for these double properties right now. But since I'm going to go for the standard opening here, the other ones I did go here and then go for these. But for the standard opening, we go for the immediate income first. And then the reason why um, player two gets this city more, uh, <laughs> has a much easier time getting this city is because player two is ahead on this space. As we'll, we'll see as this game progresses here very quickly. I'll just go like six or seven turns. Uh, let's go for the immediate income. You could step over here, but I don't think you need to. I think you can always win this property just because you can infantry train a chain across the mountain. And the immediate income is, of course, what we're going for here for those better uh, early game vehicle timings and all that fun stuff. Uh, I would suggest stepping over the mountain. All the properties that you can go for from this point on are two turns. So it takes two turns to get to this airport, two turns to make it to this harbor, this property, or this property. If you step across the mountain, you're threatening to go for this one, this one, or this one. So you've got ambiguous movement. And uh, this is the one you're going to want to go for because it's potentially contestable by your opponent. So you'll want to get that before they have any vehicles out that can really stop you. And there we go. Lots of infantry. And player two, go for your immediate income. The immediate income. And then this set, this infantry that's built right here is going to step across this mountain and go for this property, which is really hard for player one to stop. Um, while you can see on the flip side over here, player one is going to be a turn delayed going for this. So it gives player two enough time to uh, actually stop that, potentially stop that capture. From here on, I'm gonna go back here and then I'll move. I'll wanna move forward like this with the infantry because Player one is going to be able to build a tank next turn, and I don't 
I, I, I'm forcing them to uh, essentially chain infantry if they want to stop me from getting this capture. Because if they if they walk across the mountain and then build a tank, the tank can't reach to help. And I can just kind of get a nice first strike on their infantry, which may or not may or may not even be that good, but it does put pressure on player one because player one gets the first tank here. And this is part of why, because because of this situation here, and not wanting to give a first strike and kind of lose out in a lot of this potential capture uh, power, maybe never getting in the city, build like an infantry here. So now I can't, now player two can't stop, can't hit this infantry because he'll just completely lose the engagement because of the reinforcing infantry strike. And then you build a tank here to put, uh, to get the vehicle fighting happening on your two base side, which is usually what you want to do for any op any opening you want to have your you want to try and push for vehicle engagements on the strong on the side that you're strongest so the two base side is usually the side you're strongest on um actually let's look that up let's have you step over here and you move over onto this forest that's why this guy's still threatening to go for two different captures and this guy's going for the airport like that perfect money spent and now we have this tank and this tank is going to be somewhat useful because while well, player two can get this capture, and we can do the same thing over here like this. Um, we might not actually build an infantry here. We'll see. Okay, player one does the same thing to player two. So you have to block there, but then that player two gets to walk over here. Player one can't actually stop this capture. So player two has a choice here in this kind of standard opening. And that is, do they want to, I'll have this infantry built. Do they want to build a tank here? Or do they want to build a tank here? So if they build a tank here, they are letting this tank run wild, which is a little bit concerning because it can uh, come over here specifically here one two three four five six and threaten this capture while also getting a free hit over here and then it can move on to attack this this corner or you can try and build a tank here but the problem is if you build a tank here and just try to do counter aggression which is totally a viable thing to do as player two you're going to have a hard time because if you get locked into like a vehicle war over here, and you never manage to build a vehicle to deal with this tank. You can you can run into some problems. Now, player two will be able to get just because of how the tank timing works out. Uh, we'll be able to get a tank in response to this, but I think you'll build. I mean, it's tough. It would either be a tank here or a tank here. I think we'll have player two go for counter aggression. And we'll see how it works out over here. And this is just going to be the standard build. We'll do it just like one or two more days to give you an idea of how this all plays out. I think we'll go for this property. Um, actually, I guess, yeah. So player one here can give up going for the property capture in order to try and contest this capture. But that's not going to be great when there's a tank here. So in this case, this tank is complete, super securing this property. Player two. And then player one is just a little bit short on money to go tank this turn. And you don't want to fight into this infantry chain, so you go back for this capture. No problem. It takes the same number of turns to go like that as it does to just walk straight there because it's far away. And here... Player one would have the opportunity. That's a backcatcher, which is nice. So you go here, and that's going to force, it super forces a tank out of this base. It ha it has to do something, otherwise you just uh, stop this capture from ever happening, and you can also get the hit on this. You're always going to get the hit on this at this point. So we have an infantry down here, and then player one has the opportunity here to build. An artillery if they'd like one two three four five it would very quickly find some use 
It's a little weird to do in a standard build. So we'll just stick with tanks for now. But an artillery for player one at this point could be good, both for trying to put pressure on this base and, of course, breaking this pipe seam. But that's going to be a, complete, a completely different opener in itself is to go artillery first and break the pipe seam. So player two gets this city. Which is nice. Can't go for this capture. Well, you can. Let's see. If we go for this capture like this, right? Now you have to build a tank. Uh, otherwise, this tank can just stop your capture and start shutting down your one base all on its own, which is rough. And then player two can just move out to here with this tank if it wants. If they want. Nothing can interrupt this capture. Set this guy up to go for this capture. Go over here. Move up here just like player one was doing to go for this capture now. Move over here. Either go for the comm tower or this capture, depending on what you want to do. And you can see here why it's just a lot easier for player two to get to this city because of when their infantry gets built. Now, if player one just doesn't build the tank over here and builds another infantry, it's probably pretty feasible for them to get this capture. Uh, and with the tank here, it's going to be pretty feasible. So that's what oh, we have over this over here as well. So one of the ways you play mixed base very effectively is that you are trying to put pressure on certain points of the map and then like force it. If I can like force vehicle buys out of this corner as player one and then just strike up here instead, that will be really good value. That's kind of how you play mixed bases. You force them to respond in one place and then hit somewhere else where they haven't built up their forces. So right now, player two is threatening to, to hit, not KO because they only have a comm tower, but they get to hit this infantry if they wanted to. In general, the one bases don't want to fight the two bases, the, uh, the double bases, but sometimes that's uh, go for the income here, I think. Well, yeah, we'll just go for the income. You can go for the, the comm tower, it's fine. But sometimes that's what you got to do. Because the, the situation forces you to fight the double bases. So here, player one could either have a supporting infantry to defend against the double hit, or could move up here to go for the comm tower. I think we'll just go for the supporting infantry. And then move on out to go for these captures. And then here, this tank cannot reach player one's tank. So you can just hit this infantry, knock it down to five or four or whatever. Probably five. We can, we can double check. Infantry, tank, the city. Yeah, the five. There's no, there's no comp tower. And now player one's got 16k to spend money with. Yeah, none of these infantry can reach to interrupt. Um, oops, I think this guy was supposed to be here. This harbor. And then you would move back. And then you're like one turn too slow interrupting this okay so this tank is threatening to hit the harbor so you do have to build a tank over here that that's covering the harbor so you're, you're good to go and then you have another another chunk of change to play around with you can build another tank here the same threat over here so we could either build a tank to continue this attack on this down here, which might be good. You could build a tank here in preparation for this tank coming over to do a front switch, which is also a potential idea. It's not so necessary to build the tank right now because one, two, three, four, five, six on by, you can cover this city. This tank is not threatening this yet. So this is a turn of flexibility available to player one. And I think player one would try and get more built out of this corner, keeping everything shut down. So we'll just build a tank here. So. And that's the opening. The opening stages of the game that I'll 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 show off so the game to the, so the video doesn't get too long. So this is day six, the end of day six for player one. Both players kind of going for the standard opening. You can see that in this opening, player one got to the side where the initial fighting is going to happen with the uh, 
this tank built, and then player two accepted that this basically accepts this hit from this tank in order to get some counter aggression over here. And due to uh, the third, the the uh, first turn advantage balanced or counter, there we go. Uh, player two is actually able to get to this city in a relatively safe manner. It's kind of tough for player one to stop this just in the capture phase, where over here you can see player one is delayed because it's where you, you want to build your vehicle in order to maintain your infantry chain and go for this property. So that was the standard opening there. Just going to quickly go over to another opening I have set up here that I went with. Let's look at, let's look at this one. So this is also day six for for uh, player one. And I had player one go for a double recon opening. Opening the recon here. Let me actually go back in time and watch this happen. So here's... This is what the end of day three looked like for player one. I was going up for these captures instead. This capture is being delayed quite a bit because of this recon buy. And the idea with this recon buy is that it can threaten to uh, interrupt these captures over here against this infantry unless player two builds a tank. Because, I mean, they have to build a tank and then they have to start moving it out because the tank on by doesn't actually protect these captures. So the recon's kind of threatening there. But then the other idea with this recon is we'll jump ahead here is that it, yeah, it moves up onto this forest, which means it can move up to here on the next turn, because once it's here, it's already getting in position to uh, like move over here and start locking down any of the captures coming out of this double base. And player two wants to build a tank over here anyway. That's fine. But the, the real threat is that we can go up here and threaten to stop this city capture, which on the previous in the standard build, just kind of a free capture that you went for anyway and then similarly uh, a recon gets built over here so this is kind of what you do with recon openings is you leverage the fact that recons are a lot cheaper than tanks so player two is going to be able to build a tank over here to stop this recon from shutting down the, these kind of captures but they're not going to be able to build a tank over here as this recon will be able to shut down this capture or this capture. Whichever one gets delayed, the recon can, can cover. Because once it moves down to here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's already ready. After one turn, it's ready to interrupt this capture as well as this capture. And um, so that's how the recon opener kind of works is you force the tank. Like so force the tank out here. So we can then cover against this uh, this recon. One, two, three, four, five, six would be the idea. How about the recon runs over here, and now it stops this capture. Unfortunately, it can't stop this one, but it does stop this one. And um, that's nice, because that now gives player one an econ advantage uh, off of the recon without having any conflict actually happen. So the recons are still around doing stuff. And because it's hitting over here, which is actually rather distant it's more than one turn away tank wise from this base it actually can lock this city down for quite a while give you a nice econ lead and there's also as we see here we have our our recon um stopping this capture from happening or maybe not even stopping it'll force a tank um but if a tank gets built here player two does not have enough money to build a tank here and here so if a tank gets built over here you can of course just hit this uh, infantry, much like the tank was able to in the standard build. Or you can swing both of your recons up here if you want to put a lot of pressure on this one base. Which, um, well, as we saw in the end, <laughs> in the end scene there, I was kind of doing, I think I hit down here and then swung this guy up here. Oh, I had a, yeah, I, I had the tank built up here in order to uh, try and get this this city and just accept that this gets interrupted, I think. Or maybe I flipped those. I don't remember. But that's okay. Uh, you can just see how it puts a lot of pressure on player two to have to cover a whole bunch of different points on the map. Sorry about that. 
as uh, that's what that's what recons do. And then player one has to then start reacting to the tanks that got built. But if the recons are still around, they will always be able to threaten these these captures and get some economic leads out of that. It's a much riskier playstyle, a much sharper playstyle, but it's just another way that you can open the map. And then lastly, this was that was the standard opening. And lastly, we have this one where I have both players go for a uh, you can't see it because the move player doesn't let me modify the, the pipes, but they both go for an artillery first opening to break this pipe and then kind of flood out towards this one base. And you can kind of see that it worked out a little bit better for player one. Now for player two, I should say. They, of course, get this property where player one doesn't get the property. It gets interrupted. And the... Uh, the breakout here worked out better because they were able to go mech and, and tank hit and then the artillery breaks. So then uh, so then you have tank from here, tank from here, get this spill forward with the mech coverage. Where over here, it happened for uh, earlier for player one, but the mech had to stay for another hit because there's no comm tower yet and they're not, unless they're like Lash or something. And one tank gets to rush out earlier and force uh, player two to really back up over here but this is kind of an opening that's focusing on double base, trying to take down the single base by getting rid of this, the pipe scene blocker, blockage. So this, it's all about killing off the single base as fast as possible. And during this, this, this one base in the corner can start putting pressure on these, uh, these more distant captures away from this, this combating front. And for player two, it's a lot easier to try and hold this. Um, I think this corner can still probably get this this capture in the end, but that's just how this was was playing out. I can see if you can see through these little turns to see some of the opening moves. I did the same thing with these captures up here, going for this first, and then going for these harbors. So these early early turns are pretty much all the same. I think the first thing we'll see is, yeah, we have artillery first on day four for player one, and then also player two also goes for it first. And just because of how this, and from, from this base, and just because of how the timing all works out, player two still gets this infantry to go for this property, but well, player one doesn't. So that's something to keep in mind. Where like in the recon opener, you had a lot of pressure and you could probably get this property, but they have the mech and the artillery going for this early break on this pipe seam to be followed up with with tanks. Now, player two had enough money to go mech and tank as follow up the artillery. Oh yeah, player two has enough money to do that. Player one didn't. So that's why player two has like a nicer, I think a nicer artillery opener on this map to uh, kind of rush down this pipe seam and then try and take out this one base as fast as possible. So see the uh tank and artillery uh, the uh, mech and artillery fire at this and this sets up this tank to flood out next turn where player two has has this very nicely set up so i think player two has a better artillery opener i think player one almost always has the better recon opener and i think they both had a pretty strong standard opener and just keep in mind that player two actually has a very nice access to this city in particular or yeah, player two has very nice access to this city in particular, and that player one's going to need to figure out some way that they want to stop it. You could go with artillery. You could just wait till you have your copters up and running from this from this airport. Oh, and there is also this pipe seam, which I never talked about, but there's a pipe seam connecting these bases. You can't quite get the dream, which is to have an artillery right here, blocking this airport and threatening to break down the pipe seam. It takes a little too long to get there. Player one will always be able to capture the airport in time. Uh, but if there's not enough not pressure being put on your one base here and you want to try and take this corner, this would be the way to do it. Is you'd bring in artillery and then like tank, mech. You could have a mech capture this and walk over here. It's a little slow, but you could do it. And uh, once this is broken, anti-airs can lock down this airport very easily. And you can you have a very nice choke point for uh, harassing down this base. So 
that is another potential opener. I didn't have... I, I looked at it a little bit. It looks very sketchy because if this one base is investing early on on trying to break down this pipe seam, the double base can just kind of walk over and kill everything off. So it's more of a response to if this double base is doing something else. Like if the double base is going down here, then you could try and break through this and maybe sandwich down their own corner as they're trying to take out yours. So just something to keep in mind. So that was three different openings to quickly go over. There was the recon opener for player one, which I think is nice. Player two can probably go for one too. I don't think it's gonna work out just as nicely because of how the uh, the timings work out with that player order. And then I think that the artillery opening was much stronger for player two. And then the standard opening has a lot of flexibility as always, where player one can force the initial vehicle engagements and then player two can choose to answer or try and get their own going. I think answering might be better or like responding on the same side. I don't know. Either one works. There's always flexibility in the standard opening like that. Uh, but yeah, I would say that this city, very important to uh, to keep an eye on. I think player two, from what I saw, I think player two can just kind of take it and player one has to fight for it. And uh, I wish you luck out there and I hope that this was helpful to give you some ideas of how you might want to open up the game. So good luck and have fun in the Global League.